7.1 Rational Expressions and Functions. It's MA 912F 1.2. You're going to find the domain of a rational function. You're going to simplify rational expressions. You're going to use rational expressions to model and solve real life problems. We're going to let P of X and Q of X be polynomial functions so that the function F of X equals P of X over Q of X is a rational function. The domain of F is the set of all real numbers for which Q of X does not equal zero, which means we, in order to be a function, the denominator cannot be zero. In example one, they want us to find the domain of rational functions. So on part A, they gave us f of x equals four over x minus two. To find the domain, you're always gonna look to the denominator. You're gonna set the denominator equal to zero. So x minus two equal to zero, x equals two. That means that I can be any number except two. So your domain is gonna be all reals except x equaling negative two. x cannot equal negative two. On this one, it says g of x equals 8x over x squared minus 49. Again, you're gonna take the denominator, x squared minus 49, set it equal to zero. We're gonna factor it with this difference of squares. So we get x plus seven, x minus seven, and then solve each one. So you get x equals negative seven, x equals seven. So in this one, the domain, if we do it in interval notation, I'm going from negative infinity to negative seven, the union, negative seven to seven, the union of seven to infinity, which means all reals except x equaling positive and negative seven. That's when the x cannot equal. Example two application problem. You have started a small business that manufactures lamps. The initial investment for the business is $120,000. The cost of manufacturing each lamp is $15. So your total cost of producing X lamps is C equals 15X plus 120,000. Says what we wanna find is what would the average cost be to produce 100 lamps, 1,000 lamps, etc., and describe the domain. Now, they gave us our general equation, but because we want the average, we're rewriting our equation. So we're gonna rewrite it as C average is gonna be 15X plus 120,000 divided by X because when we take find the average things, it's the sum of the parts. And you divide by the number of pieces you had. So they want us to find the cost of 100 lamps. So we do 15 times 100 plus 120,000 divided by 100. So we have 1,500 plus 120,000 divided by 100. That gives us 121,500 divided by 100. So here the average cost is gonna cost us 1,215 for 100 lamps. Well, what happens when we do 1,000 lamps? So we now change it to 1,000. So we're gonna do 15 times 1,000 plus 120,000 divided by 1,000. So we have 15,000 plus 120,000 divided by 1,000. That gives us 135,000 divided by 1,000 and now our average per lamp is $135. So the more pieces we have, the more the lower our cost. So the domain is all reals except x cannot equal zero because we're not allowed to have a zero in the denominator. Examples three through five, they want us to simplify the rational expression. So they gave us an equation to simplify and find the domain. x cubed minus 16x divided by x squared minus 2x minus 8. So we're gonna start, the first part is tackling the domain, not simplifying, we're gonna do the domain first. So for the domain, you're gonna take the denominator, which is x squared minus two x minus eight and set equal to zero, and we are gonna factor it. So because it's a negative negative, we know that we're a positive and negative situation. When there's two negatives here, we're a plus minus, we're a plus minus situation. So you're splitting your x's, numbers that multiply to negative eight, 
that add to negative two, so four and two if the four is negative. So the four is the negative one, the two is the positive one. So here, x equal, x cannot be negative two, x cannot be positive four. That is our domain, those are the values of our domain. So then they want us to simplify. So now we're gonna go to the problem, so you're gonna number it one and two, and we're factoring it. The first one on top, the number one, says x cubed minus 16x. They both have an x in common. So I'm factoring out an x and I become x parentheses x squared minus 16, which causes a difference of square situation to occur. So x plus four, x minus four. And that's what you're gonna write for your numerator line. Then we're gonna go to number two. Number two, we've already factored the x squared minus 2x minus 8. It's when we found our domain. We know that it is going to be x plus 2, x minus 4. So I'm going to write x plus 2, x minus 4. So the first part, we found our domain, found what our x's cannot be. The second part is we factored the numerator by itself and then the denominator. And now you cancel the like terms. The x minus 4s cancel out. So your answer becomes x parentheses x plus 4 over x plus 2 as your leftover part, your simplified form. Okay, on example 6, they want us to do a sign change. So it says simplify and find domain. So let's look at our problem. It says 2x squared minus 9x plus 4 divided by 12 plus x minus x squared. Um, it's easier to factor when the first position is x squared, so we need to rewrite this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna number it one and two. So we're gonna work with number two first, and I'm gonna rewrite it as negative x squared plus x plus 12. I don't like the fact that there's a negative at the beginning, so the first thing we're gonna do is divide out a negative one out of everything. So you have negative one on the outside. You become x squared minus x minus 12 to make it easier to factor. You still have that negative one. Again, here's a negative negative situation, which means we are plus minus inside. Numbers that multiply to get negative 12. And add to be negative one. Well, four and three if the four is negative. So x minus four, x plus three. There's your denominator. So it means that x, cannot be negative three, x cannot be positive four. Then we go to our numerator line. So we're now gonna go to number one. Number one says two x squared minus nine x plus four. Right here brings us back to our Columbian method situation. So you can draw two parentheses. First position is two x, two x. Num First times the last, two times four, that is eight is the numerator. It has to add to negative nine, so eight and one, if they are both negative, so negative eight, negative one. Divide the first one by two, so we get x minus four, two x minus one. So there's number the first one, the numerator factored. We have our denominator factored. So you go back to the original, so we have x minus four, two x minus one, negative one's on the outside, x plus three, x minus four, and then you cancel out your like pieces. Well, again, x minus four, x minus four. So we're left over with negative one parentheses, two x minus one over x plus three. On example seven, it involves two variables. Again, they want us to simplify and find the restrictions. So first thing, we are going to number them one and two. We're gonna work with number one first. It says two x squared plus two x y minus four y squared. First thing I notice that they all are factors of two. So I'm gonna factor out a two first. So you get x squared plus xy minus 2y squared. 
Okay, so then you're gonna factor. So X and X, Y and Y, but then we need to get to negative two and add to positive one. So one is gonna be two positive, the other one's gonna be negative one. Because remember, it has to multiply to negative two and add to positive one, so two and one, where the one is the negative. So there's our numerator. We go to the second one, the denominator. The denominator says 5x cubed minus 5xy to the second. They both share a five and an x in common, so that has to come out first. So we get x squared minus y squared. This is difference of squares equation. So you get x plus y, x minus y. So we have our factored piece here for the numerator. We have our factored piece here for the denominator. We're gonna go back to the original and link them. So we become two parentheses x plus two y times x minus y. The denominator becomes five x times x plus y x minus y we are canceling out what cannot be so here the x minus y's cancel out and so we see if i said the denominator is equal to zero x cannot equal zero and x cannot equal negative y and positive y because remember before you cancel the denominator is all the possible pieces that the domain cannot be. So positive and negative y are our solutions there. Okay, on example A, it's an application geometry problem, finding a ratio. They say find the ratio of the area of the shaded portion of the triangle to the total area of the triangle. So there's two triangles here. We have our shaded triangle and the entire triangle. So first thing we're going to do is find the area of the shaded triangle. So we know the area is base times height divided by two for the formula. So our base is 4x times our height, which is x plus two, and it's divided by two. So we end up with 2x parentheses x plus two. There is our area of the shaded portion. Then we need to find the area of the entire triangle. So again, on this one, it's not just this 4x, it's this entire thing. So if we add our two pieces here, this entire length actually is 8x. So again, it's base times height divided by two. The base is now an 8x times the height, which is now this height here, which is x plus four, divided by two. And we end up with 4x parentheses x plus Four. The question wants us to find the ratio of the shaded to shaded to the entire. So the ratio is going to be the 2x times x plus 2 on top of 4x times x plus 4. Again, notice that they have something in common. The x's cancel here and 2 can go into 4 twice. So it reduces it to x plus two over two times x plus four as our ratio piece.